and welcome to this year's BBC News School Report from Hike High School. The news headlines are... I've been finding out more about the budget and how it affects young people. Surprise in Texas as fire at disposal lasts longer than expected. Today's headlines include Six Nations, Tour of Britain coming through the borders and Champions League. Our top story today, we have all the news and information on the Budget 2015. Our reporter Lee is finding out about the Budget. The government is elected to run the country for every four years. The leader of the government is the Prime Minister David Cameron and the second most important person in the government is the Exchequer George Osborne. Every year the Chancellor reveals how the government will raise and spend the country's taxes. Taxes pay for everything in the country, from schools to roads and from hospitals to streetlights. Throughout the morning, myself and my colleagues have looked at the pap all the papers. We have found some interesting things. Mr Osborne is planning on speeding up network and broadband connections. We haven't found any mention of young people anywhere though. This is clearly not a budget for young people. There's a lot about pensions, so we think they're trying to appeal for the older vote. Do you understand what the budget is? Yes. And uh, why do you think it's on the front of every newspaper? Because how much it's costing. And people um, are interested in that. And um, if you were the Chancellor, what would you put the money towards? A big party for <laughs> everybody in the waters. Do you understand what the budget is? Yes. Uh, why do you think it's on the front of every newspaper? Because it's a pretty um, important um, discussion to have. Um, if you were the Chancellor, what would you put the money towards? Um, probably more jobs, especially into the rural areas. And like. Do you understand what the budget is? Uh, why do you think it's in the front of every newspaper? I spoke about the city and what and how the money is going to go and um, if you were the Chancellor, where would you put the money? Back in communities. On the 4th of March 2015, members of the news team travelled to Edinburgh to interview Scotland's First Minister, Nicola Sturgeon. The interview was filmed by the BBC and will be broadcasted on the BBC News Channel today. Here is the story of our trip to Holyrood. We're here today at Holyrood to interview the First Minister, Nick Costa. So firstly, thanks for having us here today. Um, but our first question is to you, uh, what is it like being the first, minister, first female First Minister of Scotland and how has your life changed since then? Um, it's a big privilege to be First Minister at all, but it's a, an even bigger privilege to be the first female First Minister. So I feel a lot of responsibility on behalf of girls and women all over the country to make sure I, I do the job well. I hope it's not too many years before we see another female First Minister. <music> Trains will be returning to the borders after 46 years. They will not, however, be returning to Hoyk. Our reporter Alex is finding out what the people of Hoyk think. Around 46 years ago, on Monday the 6th of January, 1969, 
the last ever train made its way through Hoyk. The Waverley Line ran south from Edinburgh through Midlothian and the Scottish borders to Carlisle. This year, part of the Waverley Line is being rebuilt, but not to Hoyk. The new railway is being stopped at Tweed Bank, which is just 25 minutes north of us here in Hoyk. I have been asking some of the local people what they think about the Borders Railway, which is due for completion in summer 2015. Are you pleased that the railway's come to the Borders? Yes. Um, and do you think the railway will ever come to Hoyk? Yes, I do. Uh, and do you think the railway will ever come to Hoyk? Uh, maybe, in, maybe in the future, but not the near future. Are you pleased that the railway is coming to the Borders? Yes, I am. And do you think the railway will ever come through Hoyk? I would like to think it would, but in reality I don't think so. I think it costs too much. Madge Elliot is very much an associated name with the Waverley Line. She fronted a campaign to try and save it in 1969, making it all the way to 10 Downing Street. I started off by asking her how she got involved in the first place. Well, actually, uh, our elder son had a serious accident and uh, he was in hospital for almost a year. First at Peel Hospital in the Borders and then the Sick Children's in Edinburgh. Where did your passion come from to try and save the railway? Well, uh, I just felt that, you know, that I needed it at one time and uh, for, the, for the reason I've just said and I felt that other folk around. There weren't so many cars at that time, you see, and uh, we were very de dependent on that for, for our transport. What was your experience like going down to 10 Downing Street? Well, <laughs> I never thought for one minute I would end up in Downing Street, to be quite honest. I thought that when I started the petition, it would snowball out of my lap into the lap of authority, which it didn't do. So I found myself, you know, having to take it the whole way. How were you feeling the day the railway closed? It was a sad occasion, you know. We you know, used to say, a lot of people set their clocks by the, the time of the trains that went up, you know. Um, when you heard the Pullman last thing at night, you know, oh, it's time I was in bed, <laughs> 20 past <laughs> 11 at night. <laughs> Thank you for your time. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we conducted a survey asking if the railway should be continued to hike, and 98% of you said it should. So, will the railway ever be continued to hike? Coming up, Hoyk High School wins Active Schools Award for the fourth time. We look carefully at the solar eclipse, our sports report, and the weather. First, then, our resident weather girl, Bonnie was one of the student council representatives awarded the Active Schools Award. Bonnie, tell us more about it. On Tuesday, myself and Jack went to the Scottish Borders Council to collect the Active Schools Award. This is the fourth year running that Hoyk High School has won. The Hands Up Survey is how they judge the schools. The way the Hands Up Survey works is an adult asks whether the class walks. If they do, they put their hand up. And the then the adults ask about other means of travel. Then the kids would do the same again. The awards are to help promote active journeys to school. People in Texas were treated to an accidental firework display this week, which literally went on for days. Michael tells us more. On Monday, the Midland Police Department, Texas, disposed of 10 tons of illegal firework confiscated mainly last year. The operation was performed during the day as not to attract unwanted attention from the public, thinking it was a nighttime firework display. The fireworks were ordered to be disposed of by the court, so they could not be donated to firework displays, though the majority of them came from last year's 4th of July celebrations. It also, ser it also served as training for their bomb squad and pyrotechnics, who controlled the explosion. However, not everything went to plan as the vast array of explosions took three and a half days to finish. And now over to Fraser and Paul for the sport. Hello, this is Fraser and I'm Paul with the sports headlines. 
First the Six Nations this Saturday and four teams are in with a chance of lifting this year's Six Nations title. England, Ireland and Wales are all on six points, but it's separated on points difference. But France are on four points and have an outside chance in, if the results go in their favour. This weekend France visit England, Italy host Wales, while Ireland travel to Edinburgh to face Scotland. Last night in Champions League Barcelona beat Manchester City 1-0 on the night and 3-1 on aggregate. The goal came from Ivan Rakitic who lobbed Joe Hart after a precise Lionel Messi pass. This result means there are no more English clubs left in the competition. The Tour of Britain will come through the borders again this year. For the first time the Tour will be to Scotland on two different occasions. On September the 8th, stage 3 of the Tour of Britain will be passing through Newcastle in Hoyk, Selkirk, Tweedbank, Merrold, St Boswell, Castle and then finishing at Floors Castle. Stage 4 starts the next day in Edinburgh. The stage passes through Edinburgh City Centre, part of East Lothian, Dans, Coalsheam and Northumberland. Top cyclists including Sir Bradley Wiggins, Mark Cavendish are expected to turn up this year. More info including stage maps will be announced in summer. And finally, it's Bonnie with the weather. Hello, I'm Bonnie here with the weather from Wake. It's been a very cloudy week, so let's hope it clears up for tomorrow's solar eclipse. Later tonight, there is a chance of rain, and the temperature will be 10 degrees. For tomorrow's weather, it will be slightly warmer with 11 degrees, and it will be slightly cloudy with a chance of rain. Let's hope it's clear in the morning for people who might be watching the eclipse. This has been the BBC News School Report from Hoyt High School. See you next year!